Olus, 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 Elunda. Ruins of Olus preserve not too bad and the place just between the Elunda village and uh, the island of Kolokita. Why, if we are so close to the ruins, we don't visit them? Because we can't. At 365 BC, a very strong earthquake shake the island of Crete. And like a result, for 200 years, the western side of the island rise from the water and in our days it's 9 meter higher but the eastern side of the island where we just now go slowly slowly under the water so the ruins of Olus in our days covered by 6 meter salty water this sunken city was discovered by archaeologists at 1956 and a half a year with archaeologists in this area work a very famous Frenchman, Jean-Jacques Cousteau, all his life. He looking for the Atlantis and of course he can't stay beside when he heard about the sunken city next to the island of Crete. He ran here and was disappointed once more because uh, from the depths of the sea was raised a lot of silver coins. From one side each coin have a profile of a god Apollon. From another side it was two dolphins and very clearly the name of the city, Olus. So where is the Atlantis? We don't know yet. But ruins of Olus you can see only if you will dive from the both side of the bridge which united the Elunda village with the island of Kolokita. Island of Kolokita is the archaeological site for this reason we don't have any buildings and any hotels on this small island. So we will leave slowly slowly the Elunda village, the more expensive hotels, Kolokita and Spinalonga islands fine and in uh, 15 minutes about we will be in the Agios Nicolaus. So a last picture for today of this area and from the top of the next hill we will enjoy a very beautiful panoramic view of Agios Nicolaus.
you can understand the local people when uh, taking place the huge earthquake uh, and uh, the eastern side started going under the water, the local people was very afraid to live next to the sea. For a few centuries, from the 5th century until the 9th century, nobody don't build a building. Villages next to the water. Everybody prefer to live a little bit higher. The next page in the history of this small town began at 881, when on the small peninsula, which you can see just in the front of us now, was built a very small church. Church educate to Agios Nicolaus or Saint Nicholas. It was a period when we wasn't divided yet for Catholic and Orthodox. Everybody was just a Christian. This um, separation uh, we call schisma takes place at 11th century, a little bit later. So everybody was just Christians, but in a year when this small church was built, we call it period of iconoclasma. So a few years in the end of the 9th century wasn't allowed to paint any faces of the saint into the churches and wasn't allowed to put any icons in. For this reason, the Church of St. Nicholas was decorated with a very beautiful flower and geometrical shapes. And everybody who visits this small church asks each other, have you been in Agios Nicolaus? Have you seen the Agios Nicolaus? And like this, between the local people, a small village around the church start called Agios Nicolaus. And when Venetians buy the island of Crete at 1204, they made the maps on the island. They put on the map the first time a village with the name Agios Nicolaus. From the end of the 19th century, a small village became a very small town. And from the 1904, Agios Nicolaus is the capital of the more eastern prefecture with the name Prefecture of La City. So in our days, in the winter time, we have in Agios Nicolaus only 16,000 inhabitants. So in a few minutes, we will drive next to the 